Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, sitting in front of an 03 Chevy Impala here. It has the 3800 series engine, the 3.8 V6. A uh, customer complaint on this is a stall and a no start. Supposedly they were driving down the road, the vehicle shut off, and uh, that's all she wrote. Wouldn't crank back up after that. Um, that's pretty much all I really know on this. I had to push it in here to get it in. Um, to me, it kind of feels like maybe a fuel issue, you know, not 100% yet. So, uh, Let's get right to it. Let me show you what the car is doing, and then uh, we'll take off. All right, guys, we're sitting inside this beast now. Now, we're just going to take a look so I can show you guys what's going on here. I'm just sticking the key in the ignition, turn the key on. As we can see, we do have a check engine light on here. I'm just going to go ahead and crank the vehicle over. So, some sounds of uneven compression there for sure. Um, it definitely has a little skip to it as this thing cranks over. Uh, on this vehicle, I do not have a tachometer to use as a guide regarding a crank sensor input, so that's not really going to help us there. Uh, kind of in lieu of everything I'm seeing here, and you know, a good pretty universal thing for most no starts is let's go to the scan tool, let's check for fault codes, and uh, see if we can get a good direction, you know, sort of from there. Alrighty, guys, so we're in the Varus, and we're just going to go ahead and uh, identify this vehicle and see what we're working with here. O3 Impala is what we're working on. Probably could have did the automatic ID there, no big deal. This is the 3.8 liter. We'll go to the engine menu here. Just gonna check for codes. And some pretty good direction here, guys. We have a P0230 fuel pump control circuit problem. Uh, we also have this P1546 AC clutch status circuit low volts. Um, not sure if this AC clutch status fault code is going to be related or not, but uh, this fuel pump control circuit thing that we're looking at here definitely matches the symptoms we're dealing with. So let's go to the troubleshooter menu, get some info on the uh, code set parameters of this. So I'm just going back to the home screen here, going into troubleshooter. And the fault code I'm looking for, P0230. There it is right there. So some information on this, guys. P0230 sets when key is on. PCM detects electrical malfunction on fuel pump relay control circuit for half, half a second to 10 seconds. Uh, test the control circuit of the fuel pump relay for a short to ground, a short to voltage, or an open. Test for poor connection, yada, yada, yada. So basically, guys, what this code means is the engine computer is interpreting some sort of electrical fault uh, pertaining to the fuel pump relay control circuitry. So based off of this, at this point, I think what we need to do is go to a diagram, determine how this relay is controlled, determine if this is a ground side switch relay or a power side switch relay and that's really going to determine how we want to troubleshoot the circuit and uh, really what we're looking for uh, when we get to the car. Alrighty guys, what I have printed out here is a wiring diagram. Uh, we're focused in on a pretty small area here guys. What we're really looking at is just a fuel pump relay and really this is all we need to look at to determine how we want to troubleshoot this. We'll start off on the load side here guys. This really isn't the side that we're truly worried about but we'll just kind of go through it. You can see this fuel pump relay fuse is fed from this 15 amp fuse here. It comes to the relay and then the relay switch here is going to come out as a gray wire. That's what's actually going to feed power to the fuel pump. What we really need to be concerned with here are the controls. If we look on this uh, control side here guys, we'll start with this upper portion here. If we follow this black with white wire over, we see it goes to the splice, splice 174. And if we follow that to the right, we can see that goes to ground. So really what that tells us, guys, being that this uh, control side of this relay has a solid ground all of the time, um, it basically tells us this, that this relay is power side switched by the engine computer. So as far as troubleshooting this goes, guys, what we really need to do is we need to verify the controls of the relay, verify the load side of the relay. Again, due to that uh, P0230 fault code we had, we're definitely more concerned with the control sides of this. Um, one thing we could do to make sure we're on the right track is check fuel pressure. I'm going to skip that, guys. Uh, I'm trying to get this done quickly. Um, this definitely feels like a fuel pressure problem to me, even though we had those kind of uneven uh, compression sounds when we were cranking the vehicle over. So as far as first steps on this, what I want to do is I want to go to this fuel pump relay, and I want to verify that our controls are good. The first thing that we're going to check for is we're going to check for this ground here. That should be pretty easy, just test light to battery positive. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch our test light polarity to battery ground and we're going to check for power side control here on the dark green with white wire. So let's go to the, uh, let's go to the car, let's get this fuse box open, identify this relay and start doing some checks. Alright guys, what I've got you guys focused on is the uh, fuse box. This is where this fuel pump relay is actually going to live. And we can see that we have a diagram on the outside of this box here. We can see right here we see fuel pump. So we already have a good idea of where this relay is going to be. What I'm going to do is just pop this out of here. 
Looks like this is just a little push do jobber. Uh, not looking too easy to do with my stubby old fingers here. So I'm just going to grab this pocket screwdriver, push in on that, pull that out. So again, this guy right here is our fuel pump relay. It's going to be this, this boy right here. So uh, some quick things we could do is we could try switching these relays around. Uh, I'm not going to do that mainly because if this thing does start up, it's going to make for a pretty short video. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll probably just get scrapped at that point. So I'm just going to focus on actually testing this relay, guys. We take a look at this relay. We can see we have five terminals here. Uh, remembering our diagram, really only four of these terminals are used. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to find a relay adapter for this relay here plug this relay back into that and it's going to have exposed terminals to where we can use a test light and test the circuitry of this relay and it's plugged in and loaded position. Alright guys, this is the tool I'm using here. As you can see, it's just an adapter for this relay and what it's really going to do for us is it's going to expose these relay terminals so we can test them uh, in the circuit, fully loaded, everything you know still functioning the way it was designed. So I just slip this relay in here, guys, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip this back into its, into its cavity here in the fuse block. So as far as testing this relay, guys, uh, I think the first best thing to do here would be to verify load side feed to this. Uh, one thing to remember here, this is a power side switched relay. So on our initial first check, what we're looking for is for one of these pins to light. None of the other ones should light. We're just looking for one. Remember, this relay is not commanded on. We should only have one power feed from the fuel pump fuse. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my test light lights. I'm just touching the battery positive here and as you can see it does not light so we do not have a good connection. I'm just going to move my connection around here up on the strut tower guys. Test lights lighting. We're ready to do some testing. So I'm just going to touch these terminals one at a time guys. I'm just looking for one of these to light. I see one is lighting there, this uh, bottom left one here. So we're just going to continue moving on and no other ones light. So that confirms that our fuel pump fuse, at least up to this point, is good. Nothing to worry about there. So uh, the next thing that we really need to do, guys, is we need to verify our control side ground here. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to move this test light to battery positive. And uh, really what I'm looking for here, guys, <clears throat> is I'm not just looking for one ground. I'm looking for two. The reason for that is this test light is going to find a ground through the brushes of the fuel pump motor. You know, this fuel pump has very low resistance. So really, when this test light touches the terminal that actually feeds the fuel pump, it's going to light if that fuel pump is good anyways. So given that, what I'm looking for here is I want to see two different grounds, one of them through the fuel pump, one of them control side ground for this relay. So I'm just gonna go back through these relay terminals again. I'm on this first one here, this top left. I see that's lighting, so that's one. Go to this one here, and you can see actually when I'm touching this, I'm energizing this relay. So that's a good sign there, guys. What that really kind of tells us is this relay is good. At least its control portion anyways. So we found one ground already, guys. I'm just looking for our other ones here. Touching here, do not have a ground. There's my second ground. And then I have another ground there on this other pin. So I have a total of three grounds here, guys. Remember, this is a five pin relay. So uh, we don't want to jump the gun too quickly there. Uh, really kind of what I want to determine at this point is which of these terminals are actually being used here. And just take a look at this diagram here, this pin 87. This pin 87 does not look like it's being used. And that's going to be this guy right here. So I'm going to plug this back in. So I don't want my test light to light on this one. Nothing should happen, okay? Go back through this. One ground there. A ground there. And a ground there. So we, we have three grounds here, guys. Um, that's, a little, that's a little strange. Really, we should only have two. Uh, one through the fuel pump motor and one on the control side of this uh, relay circuitry. So that being said, let's go back to the diagram. Let me kind of uh, make that a little bit easier to understand on the diagram, and then we'll continue from there. So uh, really the next test that we did here, guys, was uh, we had our test light hooked to battery positive when we were looking for the two grounds that we should have here. One of those grounds would be through the fuel pump brushes itself to ground. The other ground we were looking for is this control side. But when we actually went through this and uh, performed this test, guys, what we saw 
is we saw three different grounds. And I just wanted to uh, take a moment to clear up why that was. So what I've drawn here, guys, I've just kind of drawn uh, this relay and how it works in this circuit. Now, when we went through this, we tested, uh, we tested and we found grounds at three different locations. And I just want to explain to you why that is. One of the grounds we found here, guys, I believe it was pin 86. This would be control side ground to this relay. That's fine, no issues there. Another ground we found, guys, uh, pin 30. That would be through the brushes of the fuel pump to ground. Also, no issue there. Uh, the third ground that we found, and the one that we were not really accounting for this, at least I wasn't, was this ground on this 87A here. So basically, guys, the reason we had three grounds, this being a five pin relay, one of these contacts was closed all of the time between this 87A and this fuel pump load output here on pin 30. So when we were going through and checking each of these terminals individually, we were actually finding a ground through the fuel pump motor in two different locations, one of them being 87A, the other being pin number 30 uh, going to the fuel pump itself. So basically what happens here, guys, is this switch is closed to pin 87A all of the time on these five pin relays. When this coil is energized, the switch is going to be moved over to pin number 87, and then power is going to flow from the fuel pump fuse through the relay to the fuel pump motor. So that's why we had three, uh, that's why we had three grounds here, guys, when we went through and used this uh, relay tool to actually test this. Um, basically what we were doing is we were actually able to test all five pins of this relay, but remember on this particular design, on this particular circuit, only four of these are used, 85, 87, 30, and 86. So uh, going forward, we're going to pull this relay uh, adapter out, and we're just going to front probe these terminals, and uh, I'll show you that there's only two grounds present on this car. All right, guys, what I want to do at this point <clears throat> is I want to check for our grounds to this uh, relay, and uh, really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for there to be two. One of them is going to be through the fuel pump winding. The other is going to be for the control side of this fuel pump relay. Remember, this fuel pump relay receives ground side control all of the time. It has a solid wire going to the fuel pump uh, relay control side, and that relay is power side switched to activate it. So what I'm going to do here, guys, all I've done is I've removed this tool, and I'm just going to front probe all four of these terminals here on this relay and what I want to see is I want to see two grounds present you know one of them for the control side of the relay and the other one through the brushes of the motor so I'm just going to start at this top left here and I'm just going to touch that as we can see this one lights I'm going to go to the next one that one lights my test light is of course on battery negative or excuse me battery positive so these top two light here guys I'm going to go down to these bottom ones now bam good to go and that one there, bam, good to go. So what that tells us is, guys, these top two pins, one of them is going to be the control side ground for the fuel pump relay, and the other side is going to be for the fuel pump. Not sure which one is which, but uh, if we take this relay tool and we put this back in, actually, let's take a look at the, uh, at the relay diagram real quick. Um, as we can see, guys, pin 87 is not used. Hopefully you guys can focus on that pretty well. So pin 87 is not used. 85 and 86 are going to be our control sides. 87 alpha and 30 are going to be the load sides of this. So really what we need to be worried about, guys, is we need to be worried about the uh, power side control of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick this relay back in this, uh, back in this cavity here. And remember, 85 and 86 are our two controls for this. Those are going to be these two pins here, guys. Make sure you guys can see that. 85 and 86, they're going to be our control sides of this relay. So I'm just going to stick this back in, guys, and I'm going to use my test light to battery positive. If I can get this thing back in here. So with my test light on battery positive, we already know that the uh, control side ground is intact. So what I'm going to do is basically be the computer and bypass its control of this relay. And as you can see, when I touch this terminal, we hear the fuel pump running. So no issues there. So we know that this terminal here, guys, this uh, terminal to the top right from where you guys is looking, that's going to be the uh, computer-controlled power side switched.
portion of this relay here, guys. So what, really what we need to do, given this fault code, given the fact that this vehicle does not start, is uh, we need to rig a test light up on this terminal, and then we're going to attempt to start this vehicle and see if the computer is actually controlling this relay or not. We know that the relay is good based on the fact that we can uh, control it ourselves and get this fuel pump to run. So uh, that being said, I'm just going to zoom out here. I'm going to rig this test light up on this uh, control side terminal going back to the engine computer and we're going to check for power side control on this relay. So this is what I'm doing here guys. Uh, I just ran this test light and it's hanging down. It's got a jumper wire going to that control side terminal. My test light's still on battery positive here guys. Um, I think one thing we can do first before we uh, start really focusing in on the control sides of this relay is let's just see if this vehicle starts up and runs when we are manually energizing this relay and running the fuel pump all the time. So I'm just going to get you guys set up back here. Hopefully you guys can uh, still hear that fuel pump running. You can hear the fuel whooshing through the rail. I'm just going to try and start it. As you can see guys, with my test light here actually controlling the relay myself, this vehicle starts and runs. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to disconnect this test light and the vehicle is going to stall out and die. Easy as that. So without a doubt guys, we do not have a relay problem, we do not have a feed side problem. What we have here is a control side problem to this relay. So uh, let's take a visit back to the diagrams and uh, start attacking this control circuit from the engine computer for this uh, fuel pump relay next. So actually guys, I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. <laughs> Remember the first thing we were going to do is we were just going to uh, take a look and see if there was actually control being, being supplied here. So we're still hooked up to the same place, guys. I've still got this little jumper wire going to this terminal here. Um, what I've done is I've moved my test light over to ground. I'm just going to touch battery positive and make sure it lights. As you can see, it doesn't. So we need to, we need to do something different here as far as my connection goes. So there we go. Test light is lighting when it finds battery positive. Remember guys, this is a power side switch relay, so what the engine computer should be doing here is it should be providing a power feed to this terminal on this relay to energize it and subsequently run the fuel pump. So what I'm going to do is while you guys watch that test light, I'm just going to try and start the car up and we're going to see if the engine computer is actually controlling this relay or not. So as you can see guys, attempting to start the vehicle up, we had absolutely no control there whatsoever. Uh, the test light did not light. We did check our test light beforehand to make sure that it had a good ground. So without a doubt guys, we definitely have a control side problem to this relay. Uh, our issue lies in the power side switch control side wire to this fuel pump relay. So uh, let's hit the diagram up. Let's take a look at some wire colors and uh, let's determine where our best test locations are for uh, figuring out what's going on in this circuit. So very quickly back to the diagram guys, what we've done up to this point is we verified load side feed to this relay is good. We verified wiring integrity back to the fuel pump is good. We did that a few different ways. One, our test light found a ground through this gray wire going back to the fuel pump off the page. Um, as well, when we manually energize this fuel pump, we provided a power feed on this control side wire which comes from the engine computer. The vehicle started and ran, the fuel pump ran, so really what that verifies is the relay is good, the fuel pump is good, the fuel pump fuse is good. As well, this control side ground is good on this black white wire. What we're having an issue with guys is this dark green with white coming from the engine computer. This is a power side control wire. The engine computer should be sending power on this and it is not, it is missing. So if we take a look at this wire color guys, we can see this is dark green with white here. So. The wire that we're definitely concerned with is a dark green with white. If we follow that wire over, it comes right here to the engine computer. Um, this appears to be connector do, 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 do. connector two on the engine control module, and this is going to be pin number three, dark green with white. So uh, this computer is somewhat easy to access on this vehicle guys. It's built into the air box. So well, I think our best bet, what we should do at this point, is let's, uh, let's pull this air box out of here 
gain access to the engine computer, and we'll test for power side control directly at the PCM, and we'll see if it's there or not. All right, guys, so I'm very quickly going to access this uh, engine control module here. Tools needed are a 13 millimeter socket, a ratchet, or an impact like I'm using, and a flathead screwdriver for the air boot. So I'm just whizzing these bolts out for this little, little cross brace here. I'm going to set those up here. There's a little harness that's uh, push pinned into this. I'm just going to try and wiggle this out like that. And we'll set this on the ground out of the way. Um, as far as this hose goes here, this air boot, just a little flathead screw. I think it's actually a little quarter inch. I'm just using my flathead screwdriver to save time here. My little pocket screwdriver. Don't be caught dead without it. So I'm pulling this air boot off of here, guys. A little bit stuck. That's okay. Getting these clips off of this air filter lid. Just trying to get this up out of here. A little bit of a tight fit, but not too bad. So now I'm just taking a look at uh, how this thing comes apart here. Looks like there's two 8mm fasteners right here. And uh, really, it looks like about it. It looks like without those bolts in there, this thing will just come right on out. So I'm going to grab a little 8 millimeter sock and whiz these out of here. And remember guys, the, uh, the issue we're dealing with here is we are missing power side control from the engine computer on this fuel pump relay. That is why this vehicle is not running. That's why this fuel pump relay is not being energized. So I got this out of here. I'm going to see if I can slide this computer out. I realize you guys probably can't see this too well. Maybe you can. Let me see what you guys are looking at here. Yeah, there you go. So you guys can see the engine computer pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm just going to pop one of these plastic covers off. I'm going to cross-reference this diagram, and I'm going to identify this fuel pump relay control terminal. Here, see here. So these little covers, guys, they just pop off. They're held in here with little, they have these little uh, claws that sort of slip into this connector. And uh, usually when I do these, I end up breaking them. Now there's also some small zip ties here that this harness holds them on with. Uh, what I really need to do is cut these first. So let me get a pair of dikes. So all I'm doing guys, I'm just snipping these little, these tiny little zip ties on here. I mean, there's some smaller little guys. Not a whole lot to them. It doesn't appear that these little covers are marked with what connector is what. It'd probably be a big help. But I'm going to try this one first. I feel pretty good about this one. Could be completely wrong. That'll suck. Whatever. So as I said before, these things are just held in here with little claw-like things. And uh, every time I try to do this, I end up breaking them. Um, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or what. What it looks like to me you're supposed to do is just sort of squeeze them and slip them out. Some of you guys are probably laughing, calling me an amateur. Oh, this thing is not coming out though. Let's see here, I'm just trying to get it out without, without breaking it. What are you doing, Joe? You ever done this before, Joe? Well, yeah, I have, actually. So let me see, I think what I want to do is I'm just going to uh, pop this bolt out. That's a seven millimeter, I currently have an eight. So I'm just gonna pop this bolt, loosen this bolt on this connector. Um, it doesn't come out, just so you know. It should stay with the connector here. The key is off too. 
you, know, you definitely don't want to do this with the key on. So just pulled that bolt out and just taking another look at this here. Man, I do not see any easy way to get this uh, cover off, guys. What in the world? Let me get a little, get a little bit more uh, persistent with it, maybe. Because really, I need to access this wire right here. I guess one thing I can do is I can make sure this is the right connector before we get through all this trouble. I can see a few numbers in here, guys. I see uh, pin 79 and 80. 79 looks to be like a brown or a black. Pin 80 appears to be a brown with a black. So I'm just looking on this diagram here, and uh, hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing pretty well. I'll zoom you out a little bit more, maybe. So I'm just looking on this diagram, and I'm kind of bumping those pins off what I'm seeing here. And it appears that pin 79 and 80 on this connector that we're looking for are empty. Going back to this other one. Yeah, okay, we're definitely on the wrong connector. So we just wasted a little bit of time on that. So that kind of sucks. Oh, well. So I'm just going to plug this one back in. I'm just going to use this to very gently run this connector back into place here. Now that I have it started, I'm actually just going to use a ratchet to finish that up the rest of the way. We would be spending half the video trying to get to this connector access. down guys. This isn't something you want to use an impact on. Going back in anyways. I don't really have a problem with uh, backing this thing out at this point. So again we have these little uh, zip ties we need to get cut off. Sorry this is taking so long guys. A lot of this, you know, accessing some of this stuff is truly the longest part of a lot of these. I'm really starting to get a little bit flustered with the fact that I can't get this stupid cover off of here. Hold all the way out. Yeah. Yeah, this. This cover just does not. This cover just does not want to come out of here, guys, and it needs to. It really has to for what I'm trying to do. There it went. It just released. What the hell? What did I do? I've been fighting with this thing this whole time, and I don't even know what I did to start winning. I think I just uh, pulled on it hard enough, really. No, I just broke it. That's all I did. I'm not sure how these are held in here. I mean, really, looking at them, they really just slide in here. But I guess the way that it looks is, you know, there's really no way to get these out without potentially breaking one, so. Sort of the reality of it, guys. I'm sure some of you guys will give me some flack for that. But, you know, honestly, I mean, that's just sort of the way it goes. You know, there's really nothing we can truly do about it sometimes. You know, this thing sits in a pretty covered spot. I'm not super concerned about it. I'll definitely put what's left of that back on. But really, I mean, we got we need to gain access to this wiring to do tests here. And getting that cover off is the only way to do it. So uh, now that that whole fiasco is out of the way, guys, remember what we're doing here. We're looking for a power side control 
of this fuel pump relay. And just taking a look on this diagram, the uh, pin we're looking for, pin number three, it's a dark green with white wire. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look on this connector and we're going to find this wire and we're going to get T-pinned into it. And uh, that should be a pretty good view for you guys. Hopefully it is. So the one we're looking for, guys, pin number three, it's going to be a dark ring with white. Uh, directly beside that, we should have a white wire, which is going to be for the EVAP vent control. And uh, as we can see right here, this is our dark ring with white wire. So I've got some of these thin sort of sewing needles. They slip into these tighter PCM connectors real easy. So all I did was I just back probed that, guys. And that's really the setup for the test that we're going to do. So zooming you guys back out here just a little bit. So all I'm going to do here, guys, is I still have my test light going to, uh, going to battery ground. And as you can see, when my test light finds a battery positive, it's going to light. So all we're going to do is we're just going to focus on that terminal here. And I'm just going to uh, try and rest my T-pin up against this thing in some sort of safe manner. The uh, body of this engine control module is metal, so I'm trying not to touch the metal portions of it. I'm just trying to rest my, rest my test slide in there just like that. So hopefully you guys can see that. So I don't want to try and crank the engine over, guys. What I'm going to do, just so this connection doesn't shake around, is I'm going to turn the key on first. Now that we've got hooked back into this thing the way we want to, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the functional tests of the scan tool. And I'll actually show you guys that. Let's see if I can get you guys focused back. Sorry for the shakiness of this video, guys. I'm trying to do this quick. So I've got the key back on, guys. And uh, I'm just going back to this menu here. I'm going to go to the functional tests. I'm going to go to output controls. And what I'm looking for is the fuel pump relay. This is our guy right here. So all I'm going to do with this test, guys, I'm going to hit on and off with this. And what we should hear when I do this is the fuel pump relay clicking, but obviously we have some sort of circuit fault here. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit on and off on this, and uh, we're going to watch the test light and see if it lights. So I'm going to set the scan tool right here. I'm going to get you guys focused back in on the test light here. Let's check our test light one more time. Just to make sure it lights. Uh, currently on battery ground. You're not going to be able to see it, but I'm checking it. And it is not lighting. So much of this, guys, is trusting your equipment, making sure it's right. Making sure your connections are solid. You know, you really have to trust your measurements. If you don't trust your measurements, then uh, you really have nothing. It's still not lighting. There it goes. All right, test light's lighting, guys. I'm just resting this back up against this pin. Careful not to touch ground. So all I'm going to do here, guys, I'm just going to click on and off on this fuel pump relay control. And as we can see, this is on, this is off, this is on, this is off. So uh, we definitely have fuel pump control, fuel pump relay control, power side control at the engine computer, guys. So really what that indicates to me is that we have an open circuit. Um, there's a couple of different ways we can go about finding this, you know, something like this. Um, probably one of the easiest things to do is just a quick visual inspection, see if we can see anything obvious that's broken. Uh, for the sake of time, trying to get through this vehicle quick, I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to take a quick look around the engine compartment. I'm going to see if I can determine if any harness or wiring has been damaged anywhere. And then, uh, you know, if we can't find it that way, we'll uh, have to resort to some other methods. So I'm going to get you guys set up while I just start looking around, seeing if I can find any, any obvious place where this harness has been broke through or anything like that. So 
So again, guys, all I'm doing here, I'm just going to get some of this stuff out of the way so it's not cluttering up the area. Let's get this wiring diagram out of here. Get this stuff out of here. I'm just going to this stuff back over here. Get this T-pen out while I'm thinking about it. Let me set this air box on the ground. So I'm just going to kind of follow this uh, engine computer harness, guys, and uh, really what I'm attempting to do here is just determine if I see anywhere obvious where uh, we have some wiring damage going on. So I'm just starting at the engine computer. I realize you guys aren't going to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. But uh, I'm just taking a quick look around all of these harnesses and just seeing if there's anywhere, anywhere clear where we've had some sort of either corrosion issues or breakthrough problems. It looks like the main harness of the vehicle comes down and runs sort of this way around the subframe area. So I'm just going to continue sort of looking down here, seeing if I see anything. Uh, right now everything looks pretty good, guys. I don't see any tape disturbed. I don't see any green crusties uh, spitting out of me. So it looks like that harness Looks like that harness just kind of runs under here. A portion of it comes across the top of the engine compartment right here. But as far as down here goes, guys, I don't see anything. So I'm just gonna just gonna take a quick look on top. Looks like it's taped underneath this motor mount here. Comes back around on top of the intake manifold. But I'm not seeing anything yet. And remember guys, I'm just trying to do this quickly. There's other ways we can definitely uh, determine you know, how to find harness. There we go. Okay, I think, we're, I think we might be in business here, guys. I think I see something. Let me get this check box out of the way. Let me get you guys in here so you can see uh, what I'm looking at. So what I did, guys, is I followed this uh, larger harness right here kind of where my middle finger is I follow that around on top of the intake manifold and what I saw was this get some of that light off of there this conduit has been uh, disturbed it looks like and it looks like it's going to a main bulkhead connector and this bulkhead connector looks like it tees off down here and goes to this uh, to this fuse box so let me see if I can pick this up out of here. It looks like that was supposed to be fastened into something. So uh, let me take a closer look at this uh, harness here. See if I can get you guys the best shot I know how. So as you can see this conduit looks like it's been melted or rubbed through or something. Um, it's completely Damaged and wow, okay. Let me pull this crap off of here. We have some broken wires here, guys, no doubt about it. And uh, if you look closely, right here where my index finger is, you can see one of our wires that's broken is a white with black. Now, do you guys think it's a coincidence that uh, our fuel pump relay control wire is a white with black wire? Um, I gotta tell you. It's not a coincidence at all. So let me get you guys propped up real quick. I'm going to tear into this harness just a little bit so we can get a, a better idea of the extent of the damage. And uh, we'll come back and do a quick repair and see if this vehicle runs. All right, guys, so I just had this harness pulled up here. And uh, I'm just going to try and get some of this tape out of here so we can get a better extent of the damage. And uh, something I'm thinking about right now is the fact that we had an AC clutch uh, fault code. I think it was an AC clutch circuit fault code, not exactly sure. We didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it just because really we were focused more on this no start condition here. But uh, what I can tell you is I see more than one wire broken and uh, there's a high possibility our AC clutch wire could be in this whole mess. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I also have some wiring damage down here. I don't know if you guys can see that glinty copper. Shining out of there, it looks like a pink wire. Looks like it got frayed through. And uh, our, our main wire in question here, guys, is this uh, 
green with white one that is completely broken right here. And it looks like there's another green with white one too. That was nicked a little bit, uh, but not too bad. There's also what appears to be a yellow with black wire that got nicked pretty bad, but whatever. So I think what I'm fairly certain we're looking at here is this, uh, this green with white wire particularly. I think this green with white wire here is going to be our fuel pump relay control. And uh, we can definitely look at the diagram and see what these other wires go to. They're not broke through all the way, but uh, what I can tell you is they were copper to copper um, against this green with white one. But uh, just for the sake of time, what we can do here is let me see if I can uh, temporarily reattach these. And what I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to splice a little bit of this wire back. And I'm just going to use a set of jumper wires to uh, bridge the gap here. I'm just going to strip a little bit of these off, guys. And uh, you know, something we could do too is we could uh, we could put our test light right here. We could rerun that functional test if you wanted. And I could show you that this is our control wire. You know what? Why not? So uh, before we fix this, what we'll do here is uh, we'll take our test light. We'll get this test light rehooked back up, guys. And uh, remember. This is a power side control to the fuel pump relay. I'm just going to touch my test light here and make sure that it lights. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm just touching the uh, fuse box here. Test light's lighting. So what I can do here is I can just uh, set this test light. Try and get this test light around here. Here, here's what we'll do. Just hook up this jumper wire here to the test light. Remember this power side switch, guys, so you don't want this to touch ground. So I'm just rigging it up like that for testing purposes. All I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key back on, go back to the scan tool. And I'm going to turn that functional test back on. Uh, what should happen, guys, is our test light should light. Uh, this is where our open is, absolutely, no doubt. So I'm just going back to output controls. Going to fuel pump relay controls. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this driver on and off. This is on, we can see the test light lights. And I just got a no con. This battery's dying, guys. So very quickly, what we'll do here. Uh, just to prove to you that this vehicle is going to be fixed after I fix this wiring. I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm really pressed for time here. I'm just connecting these like this, guys. Very simple. I just got this jumper wire looped between both of them. So all I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to uh, jump this vehicle off at this point. The only reason I'm doing that is because our battery's died in the process of testing this thing. Uh, this battery's junk. It's pretty weak to begin with. So hopefully you can still see our connections there. Hopefully this isn't in the way. So it looks like we're free of the belt. I'm just going to start this uh, real quickly. Let me get you guys set back here, actually. So we've restored that connection, guys. This vehicle should start. Pull this jumper wire off. And as you can see, removing that jumper wire killed the vehicle. So without a doubt, guys, this is what's going on with this thing. Open control wire uh, from the engine computer to this fuel pump relay. Uh, that is what's causing this no start. And uh, kind of what I want to determine at this point is uh, what initially caused this condition to happen. Uh, this harness was tucked up by the battery. I didn't really see... I didn't really see any way for this to happen naturally here and it doesn't look like it doesn't really look like rodent damage I mean I guess it could be 
But one thing I can see is this thing is, uh, this thing has this clip here, guys, and I'm not sure where it clips onto, but, uh, putting this thing back here, kind of where it was, if we look at it, it's pretty close to the belt. So, uh, honestly, what I'm more leaning towards as far as what actually happened here is this, this harness may have gotten caught up in the belt, and the uh, belt may have cut through this and cut this fuel pump control wire. So, uh, what I need to do, guys, I need to, uh, restore this connection. Um, I definitely need to go through, possibly cut these other wires that were damaged, throw some heat shrink on them, and redo those as well. Uh, rewrap this harness and get this thing routed back to the uh, to its proper location. But uh, that's pretty much it on this. Open fuel pump control wire from the engine control module causing a no start condition. So let's wrap it up. So That's it guys, uh, that's it on this one. Um, 03 Chevy Impala, 3.8 liter engine, no start due to a open control wire. Uh, some things we learned here, this uh, fuel pump relay on this particular model is power side switch from the engine computer. And uh, I know we did this one pretty quick. I'm just, I had a pretty rough day <laughs> here at work so I was just trying to get through this one real quick. So we didn't spend a whole lot of, didn't spend a whole lot of time as far as theory of operation goes or anything like that. We more just got down to brass tacks and figured out what was going on with this car. Um, hopefully you guys took some good lessons away from it though. Uh, some good lessons regarding testing a power side switch relay, um, how to test for an open circuit. You know, we took our initial check, we did our initial check there at the fuel pump relay, found that we had no control. What we did, what we then did was we went to the engine computer and checked for control. We confirmed that we had it there and uh, really what that told us was that we had an open circuit between the two. Uh, what we proceeded to do then was a visual inspection. And uh, that's when we found that sort of broken harness that was tucked away. So pretty easy, pretty quick. Um, really, we just tried to fly through this one. I'm, I'm ready to go home. But uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Um, I know I did as far as testing these goes. But any questions regarding any sort of issue like this, you know, just leave them down in the comments. But uh, that's it for today, guys. So thanks for watching.